Hi everybody, it's Chris here. How are you doing? Welcome back to Live Month and welcome to Excel VBA for, beginner, for Beginners 30 Real World Problems and Solutions. So what are these sessions all about and who are they aimed at? Well, I'm calling this your intermediate level, intermediate level Excel VBA course. So you know a few things in Excel VBA, maybe you've used a macro recorder, done some of our beginner courses maybe. Um, let me just check our audio here. And you, you, you know, you want to learn more, and particularly, you want to learn the learn about the applications. So I know this code, but I want to start using it. I want to start using it in the real world. In this series, I've taken thirty situations that I've encountered many times in my career, and I've got some code. I've got some little exercises, thirty pieces of code. So the idea is it moves you towards that application, moves you from beginner to a more intermediate and even more professional uh, level. Good. Thank you, everybody, for saying that you can see and hear me. Did have a couple of technical issues yesterday. We're doing OK so far, as always. Thanks for watching live, guys, and thanks for putting up with any te technical issues should they occur. If you want to get straight into the learning content, uh, just skip forward a couple of minutes. I'm going to say hello to everybody in the chat, as we always do. Good to see plenty of people watching live. Big welcome to Jeffrey. How are you doing? Uh, Canada, Canada is sending down some chilly weather. I see Jeffrey. Good to have you with us. Uh, Bart's with us. How are you doing, Bart? Good to see you. And Lee, good to see you too. How are you doing? Albert's with us. Nice weather um, over in the Netherlands. You know, we've had some lovely weather here, British people, obsessed with the weather, aren't they? Uh, we've had some lovely autumn weather this week, just walking the dog today. Absolutely beautiful. Big welcome to Jazz. How are you doing? Big welcome to Carol. How are you doing down in South Africa, I believe? Katie, how's it going? Wow, all these comments, fantastic stuff. Uh, Thomas is with us. Thomas, I think you're new to the live sessions. Is that right? Big welcome. And let me know where you're coming at us, Thomas, in the world. Uh, Keith is tuning in from Wiltshire. Yeah, it's windy, isn't it, Keith? There's been things blowing around in the garden outside. Um, so it's windy where we are as well. I think that's everybody, but if I've missed you, uh, make sure you say hello in the chat. And, you know, if you're new, um, yeah, where are you watching from and what are you using Excel for? You know, what kind of things are you working on? And, uh, yeah, any questions, you can go ahead and put those in the chat. So with that said, what we do in this series is we select a random problem. And we've got 30 in total, 30 30-minute 30 sessions. So it's a 15-hour course in total. Uh, now we're down to seven. As I said yesterday, it's beginning to look a little bit lonely on the random problem selector. Only seven more to go. This is episode 24, of course. So without further ado, let's crank up the random problem generator. There go the balls. And we are into today's session. What are we going to be doing? We've been doing a lot with position control recently. And one thing that teaching this series has reinforced for me is the importance of position control. So understanding how to manipulate those data sets, what's the size of the data set, how many rows, how many columns, how do I get to the end of the data set? Could I take a row off the bottom of the data set? All of that stuff so important uh, in Excel, Excel VBA. Right, here we go. Speaking of position control, something quite similar today, but we want to push data from a database to a table. OK, so let's briefly explain this one. Firstly, I've very controversially used the word database uh, to describe something in Excel. Some people find that a bit controversial because Excel technically isn't database software. You know, in the Office package, you get access, which is database software. But in reality, guys, a lot of people think Excel is a database. They're using it as a database. What's the most basic and common usage of Excel? It's just simply storing data. So we've got a We've got to have a good set of skills around data sets or databases, whatever you whatever you want to call them. Now, this is concerned with uh, extracting, so I said, pushing pushing data from a database to a table. So we've got a database, lots of information in, hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands of rows, and we want to just pick out an entry. We want to pick out one of those entries. Um, I've said push here. To be honest, I'm trying to understand what I mean by push because. Yes, I think what we mean here is, yeah, we could select a row in the database maybe and then um, get that row and take some of the information from that row into a table. I've said table here, so into an area where we can easily view that information. So something like that. Who's tuning in? Big welcome to DC. How are you doing, DC? 
so this is this is what we look at today and don't forget guys we have a free long form video about 40 minutes the secrets of the random task generator that's what i've just used there's a nice little animation mechanism here that uses conditional formatting um random numbers a probability table it's actually called monte carlo simulation uh, this whole mechanism it's a really cool thing to know in excel uh, i've got a free 40 minute long form tutorial does require your email address the link is in the video description below you just pop your email in and you'll get an automated email about our members monday learning community if you love learning like this i love doing these live sessions we do them year round in members monday you get access to a library of content and a great learning community which is the main thing the link is in the video description below Right, with that said, let's close down the random problem selector. Just one more thing on the random problem selector. Through this series, I've been logging all of the links uh, to the sessions. I just accidentally opened one. Let's quickly close that. That's going to cause absolute mayhem whilst live streaming. Yeah, I've got all of the sessions itemized here. I've got the links there. Um, and I've got all the download files as well. So at the end of the series, I'm going to email this out. It's going to be a free 15-hour practical uh, VBA course. So that'll be there for your uh, for your reference. Okay, let's close down the random problem selector for now. And um, we've got to go ahead and do our random uh, data, data generation. So let's have... Mm, okay, let's, let's go for... A multi-sheet setup today. Let's let, let's chat, challenge ourselves a bit. I'm going to put database in inverted commas. You know, just want to acknowledge the fact here that Excel isn't a database. Difficult to put things in inverted commas in Excel, isn't it? Have to put two inverted commas uh, at the beginning. So we've got our database. Um, let's do something different today. Let's do let's do some dogs. So we've got dog name here, and I'm going to have. The local dogs in my village. And if you want to put your dog in now, your dog wants, you want your dog to have its moment in the Excel limelight. Why not put your dog's name in the chat? Okay. So Betty's next door. Um, then I always forget the name of the dog two doors down. Okay. Struggling a bit with actual dogs, dog names. Uh, Maisie is going in. So Katie's dog is called Maisie. Um, Okay, what other dogs have we got? <laughs> right, I'm going to go for John and Nigel here. Okay, and Keith is in with Dixie and Millie. And there we go. Okay, also, also need your dog breed here. Let's go ahead and, and put some breeds in. Now, my dog is a, it's called a flat coat retriever. Um, she looks like a Labrador with long hair or a setter, Alt H O W 20 hair, maybe. Um, so let's have a setter here. Let's have some Labradors. Keith, what breed are your dogs? And let's have a look. Bart with Ollie and Zoe. Very good. Uh, I've missed out Bruno as well. Okay. Okay. Keith. We're saying a beagle and retriever here. I'm just going to go beagle, Keith, if that's all right. Okay, then what else have we got? The back sun, is that, is that how you say it? Control C, Control V here. And then let's take these two. Control Z, Control C, Control V. Control C, Control V here. And then Bruno is is a mix. Very good. Okay. So got dog name breed. Let's go for age here. Dogs generally live between 1 and 15, don't they? And why not? Let, let's just have a uniform distribution. So ram between will do this. So let's ram let's say ram between 1 and 15. I did read something sad, sad on Twitter about the world's oldest dog um dying the other day at the age of 24 or something yeah that did did make me sad but i mean that's that's a great innings isn't it age um let's have country here mm. now we do have a session on i'm just going to put these in quickly guys uh we do have a session on random creating random data coming up so you know i'm typing this data in 
Um, you've seen various techniques I've used to create random data run between and Monte Carlo simulation. Monte Carlo simulation is the best way to create random data. You can, of course, let me plug this quickly because it could be useful if you're interested in this. You can go ahead and uh, get our free uh, tutorial on this, Secrets of the Random Task Generator. But we'll also go through the main parts uh, in, in a session as well. So we've got our database. Okay, Alt-O-H-R here. And we're going to have data. Remember, we had an interesting conversation yesterday on different ways of referencing sheets and different options there. Um, so let me know on, in the chat if you've got any more further questions there. And let's say here, um, alt -O -H -R -R here. let's just say view. So on this sheet, we want to be able to aim um, to be able to select a dog from a list and then return the information to the corresponding data data here okay fairly basic stuff you might say You've got some kind of database in the file and we want to view some information from one row of the database so what's the main stuff where we've got to do going into our planning and conceptualization phase let's talk through in your native language what you're trying to do well we want to select one of these docs and so maybe we have a drop down menu to help us do that so we might go for nigel and then we need to establish Nigel's position in the data set. So we need to establish the dimensions of the data set and then Nigel's positions in it. And when we do that, we'll touch on should we have a static reference or a dynamic reference. In the past couple of sessions, we've done a lot on dynamic um, position control with XL VBA. So we've got to find a particular entry, establish which row they're on, and then return some information. And... Um, hmm. Let's put one more in here. I'm just going to say color. Oh, it's going to go black or black or liver. You're not meant to. You're not meant to call dogs brown. I don't think. I think you're meant to call them liver. Is that right? Let's just uh, control C, control V here, control C, shift and down arrow, up arrow, control V here. Okay. And to yeah, add a little bit of complexity here. Let's only return data data from specific columns here. Hmm. And then to make this difficult, let's suppose that the column order we want to return is different to the column order here. So let's suppose we, we want country first, and then let's suppose we want the breed, and then let's suppose we want the name. Now, why does that make things more difficult? Hmm. Say dog name, and let's take one more. Let's take the go on then. Let's take the color here. Okay, yeah. And as always, very contrived example, clearly. But this concept is going to be so useful. You know, it's a very common thing to do in Excel uh, and VBA. And as always, well, this is kind of the approach I've developed through this series. Let's just um, let's do this with formulae first, and then let's look at doing this uh, with VBA. So, firstly. Hmm. So we've got dog name, country, and breed. Okay. This cell would allow us to allow us to choose the dog name. I'm going to say Alt H B A here. Just put the borders in. So the dog name here, Alt H H, and then using the arrows going to the going to the yellow cell here. Just going to highlight this cell to remind us that there's a dog name in that. Okay. This is where we're going to select select the dog name, and we want the rest of the data to go in. Actually. Let's not do that. That's that's a little bit too contrived. Even for me, that's a bit too contrived. Let's go here. Let's have dog name. Control B, Alt H B A. Then let's have a button here. <laughs> yeah, a button here holding down the Alt key. No macros yet. And let's say get data on this doc. Hmm. Get data. So thinking about this task is a bit more sophisticated than what we've been doing the past couple of the sessions, and it's going to bring together. It's going to bring together a few different themes, locating a record uh, in a data set, 
defining ranges like data transfer all kinds of stuff that, that they should bring together so firstly are we going to set up a mechanism to support the selection of the name what, what's the problem going to be here well the problem as always as often in excel where you're trying to get to a cell to speak to a data set you're trying to match a value in a column spelling spelling is going to be a problem so we might avoid that by providing a drop down menu I'm going to go alt a v v here now something I was trying to do yesterday is get all of the unique values from a data set get the unique values from a data set to display in a drop down menu yeah so unlike our data set, each value appears once. I was working with a data set where values would appear multiple times. This is a project in commodities trading. Um, so I wanted a drop-down menu, alt a v v formula-driven drop-down drop menu that would display unique values from a data set. And I was trying to do it with the unique formula. Like I was hoping it, it would be as easy as this. I could just type in unique and then go to the data set and put the range in and that would work. I was hoping it'd be that, it, would be the, it would be that simple. It's not that simple. So has anybody got a nice approach for that? I had a look online and it's all a bit convoluted. So I was, felt a bit let down by the, by the unique formula there. Okay, so the idea is we can select a dog and then we're gonna go to get data. Hmm. So let's try to do this for, uh, formulaically first. So I'm gonna just create a, a, a simple formula link here. So let's take Maisie and let's suppose that let's do this with formula first. Now, it should be easier in this cell to get that to get that formula based solution. Why is that? Mm. Why is it easier to get in this cell? Mm. So thinking about it, hmm. It should be okay, actually, uh, thinking about it. We, we could use VLOOKUP here. I was trying to work out, would we need to use HLOOKUP at all? Okay, yeah, let's let's uh, use XLOOKUP, rather. Let's try. No, that's not going to work because they're not unique values. Um, okay, um, let's just do this with VLOOKUP then. So, so we're going to look up this value. Okay, tab, we're looking at this value, comma, table array. Okay, so now we've got to select our data set or our database. What's our policy going to be? Well, I'm not sure if we're going to have time to do it dynamically today. So I'm going to set it up in a static way. Uh, but we can always go ahead and make it dynamic later, of course. Uh, so what are we looking for first? I think it's the country. So one, two, three, four, four columns across and then zero because we're working with uh, discrete data here. Okay. Seems to be working okay. Um, let's go ahead now. Can we just copy this across? Well, let's see what happens if, if I just copy this across. Okay. Not working. So what was the problem there? Hmm. Well, I got one set of absolute references right i put absolute references in for the table for the database you know we don't want that reference to move across we all definitely want to include this first column so so that was accurate but what was the other hmm what was the other absolute reference i needed here hmm in order to just copy that v, v lookup formula across Good's got some good uh, contributions in the chat. So thanks very much. Yes, yeah, the Doggy Football League uh, on its way back. Absolutely, the Doggy Football League was back in the lockdown days. We created a, a random, uh, well, a, a football league um, generated through Monte Carlo simulation, but but quite realistic in the sense some of the teams were strong and some, some were a bit weaker. Um, Carol says, I like the random generator. Yeah, I, I love it. You know, I think you've always got to have a project where there's no pressure, although I have ended up using this professionally, but you've got to have a project where, where you're just playing. It's what I call a safe space. I've tried to create a chess computer in Excel, <laughs> for example. I've got this little offside game uh, too. So I think you've got to have a project where you're just having fun. Yeah, and it doesn't matter. There's no pressure. There's no deadlines. Don't do a YouTube video about it. Don't do a YouTube series about it. That's what I found with the chess project. That, that rather changes things. Um, just do something fun, and it's a great way to learn. 
Um, and Michael says, yeah, I was using index match when I can't use VLOOKUP. Michael, have you looked at XLOOKUP? I would definitely suggest it's worth learning XLOOKUP as a substitute to index and match. That means you, you can use a single formula rather than combining two together. And just says for the drop-down menu question, so I was creating a drop-down menu and trying to just get unique values. Yes, you could definitely do this, Jazz. You could uh, do remove duplicates and then set up the list, absolutely. I was looking for, for a smoother and more um, dynamic solution, I suppose. So just being able to put a single formula in, not have to go through that additional stage of treating the data and, pull, and pulling out uh, the unique values. He's absolutely right. We need the dollar signs in here. We'll do that in a second. And Jeffrey's absolutely right. Yeah, good stuff. Okay. So let's fix this value and then move this across. So control R. Okay, good. So now we've got the same value coming through each time. Why is it the same value? Because we've got this, uh, this value here is fixed. Okay. So what might the options be? Uh, well, you could go ahead and just um, change that value manually, or you could drop a little match formula in here. We've seen match come up quite a few times in this series. Uh, very underrated match. allows us to do cool things like this. So if I match the column header to all of the column headers and fix that range and then specify an exact match, what's match going to return? Well, it returns the position or always returns an integer, a number. And that should mean, hmm, what's the chance of this working? That should mean um, if we take this across, yep, not quite right. If you go there and we do want that to be relative, not, not absolute, and control R here, yep, it'll actually work quite nicely. So you can see control C, control V here. There we go. You can see, so I've managed to use the same formula there. Yeah, it's the same formula. Obviously, the relative references are changing as, as we move across. Yeah, that might be slightly preferable to having to manually put in uh, put in those values. So that's VLOOKUP and MATCH uh, being combined together there. So Oli, Setter in the USA and Black. Oli, Setter, USA and Black. Good. Uh, so possible. Possible with VLOOKUP. And we've had some comments in the chat. Um, X lookup might be an option. The value that we want to look up by is in the leftmost column of the table. If you had to look up by country, for example, and you had unique countries in there, if your unique identifier, the piece of information you want to look up by, in our case, the name, if that was in a column to the right, not in the leftmost column, then VLOOKUP might not work for you. And that's when, as Michael said, you could go for index match. Good observation from Michael here. Uh, I'll come to in a second. Or, or X lookup. XLOOKUP could be an option, but what's the problem with that XLOOKUP? Not available yet in many versions of Excel because it's one of the uh, newer formulae. And Carol's saying, yeah, absolutely. I use index match. I use offset match. Mm. And Carol's saying, yes, I for the column, I use match that. Yeah. I tend to use match and offset. I just find offset a little more intuitive, easier to understand. Um, so any thoughts on that one? Right. So that's the basic mechanism. So why would we want to do this in VBA? Mm. Good question. Yeah. I mean, I think you should only use VBA if there's a reason to use VBA. And in this situation, you know, it's work, working very nice with VLOOKUP. I'm trying to think of why you would need VBA for this. Um, it could be any number of reasons. You know, you can't quite get the sophistication you want with a formula. Um, but the important thing is, yeah, for me, there has to be a specific reason for using VBA. You know, if you can get it done with formulae, I'd say do it with formulae. That's because if you bring VBA into it, it does make things more complicated, allowing macros. And um, it also means whatever you build is not going to work in online versions of Excel. But let's suppose we need a, a VBA based solution. I'm just going to duplicate this. Control C, Control Alt V and V. Uh, control alt v v there we go and let's say vba based solution Do, doing the same thing in vba
I'll take B A here. Okay, Control Z. Control B, Alt H B A. Could have just copy pasted the formats there, of course. There we go. Okay, so for VBA based solution, clearly there's not going to be any formally here. That could be a reason to move to VBA. Maybe you want to allow the user the option to overwrite these cells. Maybe you want to overwrite these cells with other information. This is a common reason to use a VBA when you're doing creating this kind of looking up mechanism. Maybe you need to overwrite the cells for some reason. Uh, okay, let's go ahead, insert module. Uh, option explicit. Now today I'm going to rattle through this code quite quickly because we haven't got a huge amount of time today. But as we go through the important parts, I'll try to flag up because for each each aspect of this code, we've we've got a dedicated session to it uh, in this series. So this will be a nice way uh, to bring everything together. Okay, so I'm going to say sub get dog info. Okay, what does what does the macro do? It displays dog info in viewing area. Okay, All right. So let's say dog position dog. I'm going to say dog pos. So as integer here. database there we go okay so first step would be to get the position of the dog in the database what technique would allow us to do that and we've already had people mention this today and you know appreciate how useful it is so so we can use match to do this so we want to find position that means using match so a first step would be to to create a with end with statement here i'm going to use my preferred referencing technique which is to reference the actual name of the sheet in the previous session, 720, uh, session 23, right at the end of the session, we explored the discussion about the pros and cons of each referencing technique. Uh, this is my preferred one. So dog pos equals dot range. Okay, now we're talking about ranges. We've got to decide do we want a static or a dynamic solution. I'm going to go for a, a static solution today. So we've got B7 to B17. So you could name that range, or even better, you could define this range dynamically. B7 to B17 here. And yeah, probably won't do that today, but I think in the past five or six sessions, two or three times, we've covered that dynamic range definition. So using dot end Excel up, those kind of constructs. Um, application dot worksheet function dot match, of course. Worksheet function dot match. Open the brackets here, space and underscore. So what value do, do we want to look up? That's going to be the value on the view sheets. Range. Okay, so it's this value here, C8. Once again, think about do we need a named range there? Would that be sensible? Okay, and then zero should do this. Okay, nice. So, yeah, as I go through this, I kind of get a bit nervous, a bit anxious because I'm not putting in all, all the mechanisms I want to put in. Another mechanism I would want would be a validation mechanism because if if this happens, if there's nothing in the cell, and, well, firstly, we can see that VLOOKUP is returning something that's that we don't like to see in spreadsheets, which is error messages, so how might you avoid that? If error is an option, personally, I try to avoid if error because I want to know what the errors are. Um, so I'll probably have a mechanism here to, yeah, to actually try to see, to actually account if, to actually um, look in the database and count. And if the, if that equals one, if it finds this value in the database, then it tries to do, to do VLOOKUP. If not, it won't do VLOOKUP. A bit convoluted, but a validation mechanism that's going to help avoid these errors. A validation mechanism in VBA. What, what happens now? I think if there's no entry, because... It's looking to match a space in this range. I think this is going to return an error, but let me just confirm this. Hitting the F8 key, you can also go to debug and step into here. Yeah, so you can see we get the, the match error. So Excel can't find the value you're trying to match to in this range. Mm. Yep, so we won't worry too much about it, but you'd want another va validation mechanism here. You'd want a line of code here 
checking that there's a value in the cell. If there isn't a value in the cell, then you'd want to notify and exit using message box. I'd go even further. I'd want to check that this value exists in this data set again using application.worksheet function and count if. Use that to check that the value exists in the data set. If it doesn't exist in the data set, then again, notify and exit. So a couple of validation mechanisms there. All of what do they do? They just help us to avoid errors, errors in the spreadsheet and even worse, errors uh, in VBA. How are we doing in the chat today? 30 people watching, fantastic. Thanks for being with us live. Hope you're working along with me. Jeffrey says, yeah, the, the, your message was pushed. So maybe the VBA in access to push the result to Excel. Yeah, I'm trying to recall, Jeffrey, exactly what I meant by push. But I think push is a situation where you would have a button next to the row in the database. Yeah, I have done this a few times. You have a small data set, less than 100 rows, and you have a button on each row. And on each button, it says push. And that pushes the data into a nice form-based view. So you don't want to view the data along a row because there's lots of data. You don't want to scroll along, along the row. That push button will, will push that data, display it in a nice form layout that's easy to read. Yeah, so that's what I mean by pushing data. Coming back to me a bit now, it was a couple of years ago I designed this. <laughs> so that would push the data, you see. Now, that is a slight variation of what we're doing here. You could certainly adapt, uh, adapt our code to do that. OK, so now hopefully we're getting the dog position coming in. If I hit the F8 key, and here we can see dog position equals three, one, two, three. So we're talking about Rex here, and there's uh, Rex. OK, good. So that's the most difficult thing, really, establishing the position uh, in this data set. I'm going to need an anchor cell here. So once again, it's match and offset. Previously, Michael was talking about match and index. So these little formula pairs that exist together, it's really good to know them. If you look up a match is one that we used earlier and in VBA match and offset, match and offset often working together and in, in the spreadsheet, uh, in, uh, in their formula form, often, often working together. If we're using offset, we want to offset from an anchor point. And I've said several times in this series, a good idea to give these anchor points, the top left points in a data set that you're going to be using a lot, a good idea to give it a named range. That means if there's um, rows added or deleted above, your code should still work. So we've always got an eye on that. We've got an eye on what's going to happen in the real world when this is used. You know, that's why I'm concerned about validation and all of these checking mechanisms to try to avoid those errors. OK, so and then what data do we want to bring through? Hmm. Can I avoid having a repeated construct here? So we've got four lines of code here. Um, OK, I think I'm just going to go for a repeated construct. Right, so uh, sheets view, dot range. So we'll start with the country here. So the country is in B15 equals, and then we can say dot range Okay, let's let's go a step further here. I'm going to use another with statement here. So we've got two with statements working together. So I'm going to say with dot range anchor point here. Saw this yesterday briefly. I don't necessarily recommend this. It can get a little bit confusing. And credit to Ian Lamb from members in our members Monday community who um who used this on a project this year and. Um, and it got alerted me to it. But now we've got two with statements. So this statement, you can see it's got a it, it's got a dot here. It does need the dot. When Excel gets here, it's going to concatenate, join together this construct with this construct. So that's what happens when two end widths, two widths work together. Okay, ah, Keith, Keith has spotted this one. Good stuff. Yep, good shout, Keith. Excellent. Very good. Uh, so, yeah, DC, yes, yeah. DC talking about the getting ways to get unique values from data sets. Um, yeah, so some good comments here from DC. And this this is interesting, this syntax you can see in the, in the, common, in the comment on the screen. It says A1 and then the hashtag. Uh, that hashtag is going to 
allow you to reference all of the data in the contiguous range below that cell. So it will be A1 until it gets to an empty cell. Um, and that you combine with you can combine with unique and then um, and then get it done. I think that's what I tried to do DC yesterday, but it wasn't as easy uh, as I thought. Um, yes, but we won't get too distracted by that. Not the subject of today's uh, session, right? So sheets view dot range B fifteen equals dot range anchor point. And then we're going to go underscore head dot offset. And then dog position as our vertical offset here. So the number of rows to go down. Then this is going to be, uh, this is going to be, is it, this isn't the dog name, is it? This is the, this is the country. So I'm going to put that in an annotation here, the country. And the country is one, two, three, four columns across here. Hmm. Okay, so that should bring the country in. Now, can you see what I was hesitant about? We're going to have to repeat this line of code four times, um, one time per piece of data. Mm. Again, that's something just makes me anxious. That means there's a lot of code to maintain and change should things change. So in the real world, I'll do this slightly differently. And can anybody explain how would we be able to do this using just a single line of code? Um, might even do it at the end, time permitting, struggling a bit for time today. Uh, but let's see. Right. Does that, does it work just with the single piece of data to be, to be brought through there? Do, 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 do. Ah, yes. Good shout. Um, mm. Yep. Good shout that Keith. Good shout from Keith. Very, very observant. Good stuff. Yes. So we don't need to repeat anchor point, do we here? Because we've used it in, in width. Um, so we can just say dot offset there. Oh, that, that's quite concise, actually. That makes me feel a little bit better. We've got it on a single line. Yes. So what's the way Excel will read that is sheets data dot range anchor point dot offset. So it's going to move away from anchor, anchor point by the value in the variable and then four columns across. See what happens here. I've got liver coming in. One, two, three. So it should be three columns across. It's an absolute classic error that I would make with offset. But that for me is, I call that a kind of intuitive way of working. I'm not, I'm not worried if that's going to be wrong. I'm just going to get it approximately right. Then I'm going to get feedback. I'm going to get feedback. And if it's wrong, uh, then we fix it. You know, it's like it's like having a conversation with someone, you know. You establish meaning and mutual understanding by interacting with somebody else. Yeah, you don't think for an hour about everything you say before you say it. Yeah, you kind of throw an idea out a little bit and then people kind of give their feedback. And that, that's how you move towards understanding the meaning and knowledge. Um, so it's about an interaction for me. It's an in, about an interaction with the VBA editor. Uh, breed is one column across. Right, I'm going to copy this four times. What would be the alternative here, guys? Hmm. Rather than copying this down. So it's going to be B, C, E, and E. Yeah. And then C is breed. And D is dog name. Then e, e is e is color. Okay. So breed is one, I believe. Yeah, breed is one column across. Dog name is zero columns across. And then the color is one, two, three, four columns across. So that's what we've what we pulled through by mistake. The first time. Mm. Okay, cool. Let's get the data here. Okay, we've got the got the data coming in. So Rex UK Labrador liver. Rex UK Labrador liver. Okay, nice. Let's try somebody else here. Dixie, we can see our V lookup. Updating straight away. Dixie USA Beagle. Dixie Black. Dixie USA 
and black and beagle yes i keith i know that's not the case <laughs> i know you're, you're not resident to the um to the um united states of america of course not right what ideas have we got very quickly have we got time here i, I think we've got time so my idea would be do you need a loop yeah we'd we'd loop through something here we would loop through something my idea would be to control this data transfer process in in the spreadsheet so from an engine sheet okay and i'll do it like this so i'd say data item this is how i actually do it guys this is how i actually do it on projects i try to avoid repeating code as much as possible that's just a good principle and if i need to make changes i'd rather be able to do that in the worksheet than have to go to the vba editor it's easier for you also means you can say to your customer if you need to make changes then you might be able to do it here okay data item country breeds and then offset okay so three one zero and four and then destination cell Okay, alt h o w 15, alt h o h 30. Oh, no, that's fine. That's fine. Control B. Then destination cell to B15, C15, D15, and E15. Now, if you watch on replay, it's absolutely crucial now to your Excel, Excel, VBA learning if you want to see a real professional mechanism in operation. How can you get rid of this code, substitute it for a single line of code, Harness what we've just built here in, in the file to get the data transfer done using a single line of code. Mm. That's your challenge. Right, named range here. So EDT table. You'll always see this named range in my Excel VBA applications. E for engine, DT for data transfer, and then table. Good. Um, yes. <laughs> basically mapping that, that's right carol that's essentially what we're doing you know, we're mapping these lines of code uh into a table here now yeah what what i tend to do i wouldn't go for a fully dynamic solution but i'll put some formatting in here and then that that named range that, that i just created alt m n here edit yeah i'll, I'll make that named range the same range as the formatted area, and then that would allow you to add additional uh, data items. Okay, I won't do that now. That gives you a little bit of flexibility there. Alt H E F here. Okay, so hmm, this is going to be slightly different. This is going to be slightly different now. Yeah, so we're going to loop through Sheets Engine here. with okay right so dim i'm going to say dt cell data transfer cell dim dt cell as range and here's the loop now we did have the suggestion of a loop from carol so we're going to loop through something we're going to loop through the cells in this range here so uh for each each DT data transfer cell in dot range. The name range again. Uh, EDT table, of course. EDT table. There we go. And then close the loop. Always close it straight away. So don't forget to do it later. We can see it's only a short routine, isn't it? But we've got a few levels of indentation. It's already quite complex. Um, and then we want to say sheets U dot range uh, dt cell dot offset zero two dot uh, zero two that's it equals and then underscore sheets data this might require a little test and tweak but you know that's that's what it's all about data dot range now we need our anchor cell anchor point with an underscore dot offset 
That's going to get a little bit complicated. So dog position as before, which is our variable name. In fact, let's put the underscore here. So dog position and then et cell dot offset offset um, zero one. I think that's okay. Do we need another bracket at the end there? Mm, okay, so I said I'd make it simpler. <laughs> that's a single line of code, yeah? It's just across three lines. You can see we've got two underscores at the end of the first and second line. That's just continuing the code onto the next line. Mm. But what's this doing? What it's saying, uh, the value on the view sheet and then it's the range that's two columns away from the DT cell. Now the DT cell is these cells here. So two columns away is gonna be this cell. So it's gonna read B15. So it's gonna read sheets view dot range B15 equals the value on the data sheet. Then we're offsetting from the anchor point by the dog pos match positioner and then by DT cell, DT cell dot offset. So that's gonna be this value here. Mm. So hopefully that's going to bring the offset through as well, but we'll see. We'll see. Right, we could test that. We're running out of time a bit today, so let's 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 go for broke here. Let's clear the table and let's see if we can get everything through. Get data. Everything's come through for Dixie. Let's try somebody else here. Let's try Ollie, and I can see the data coming through there. Okay. Seems to be working well, and Keith says, absolutely, I, I shall need to uh, chew, chew on this. Absolutely. Um, and it might sound like I've made things more complicated there, but I'm much more relaxed with this. And the reason I'm more relaxed is we've avoided that repeated syntax, repeating the same line of code four times. Yeah, we've got a sense of repetition here, but this is very easy to manipulate. We can very easily change that offset. That's going to change the column control very easily change that destination cell, very easily add additional pieces of data as long as there's some dynamic quality to this named range, or as I said, just to make the named range a bit bigger. Um, that's going to allow us to control this process really easily and in a really flexible way. And as I said, you could even give this to your customer, which might be you, might be your family member, might be your paying customer. I don't know what situation you're in, whatever situation you're in, you might be able to hand it over and say, listen, um, this mechanism allows you to control this process yourself. Uh, good. Okay. So any final questions then, guys? I'll just go through the comments quickly, but any final questions, put those in the chat. And just one final comment here. This is how I control all of my data transfer processes. Uh, on the engine sheet, using a data transfer table, um, this is the way I do it. Good. So Lee says, uh, so Lee's mentioned that you're doing the um, the Excel World Cup. So, okay, so Lee missed qualification by 30 points. Now I know the exact format onto next year, Puzzles for Everyday Problems. Happy to send send the papers to you. Okay, yeah, it would be interesting to send them through. Actually, I, I saw them actually, Lee, because you did uh, email them through. Um, I had a quick look at one of them. So, yeah, well, great effort, Lee. You know, I love that. Just going out, trying to get it done. And then if if it doesn't work out right, just, just being open about it. You know, I love that attitude. Very good stuff. And, yeah, if it's going to help your Excel, you know, why not? Why not get involved with uh, with the Excel World Cup? Carol is saying, yep, this is interesting. Going to have a play around with it. And Lee's going to have a play around. DC's got to go. Good to see you, DC, as always. And Kate says, yeah, absolutely right. Gratifying to prune it down. I like that phrase. So that's what we managed to do. We managed to prune down the code today to make it something more elegant, lean, concise, something that you're not in the back of your mind, the deepest, darkest corner of your mind. You're not worried that one day I'm going to have to come back and work on this file and it's going to be difficult. Yeah. That's the idea, I think. Now, if you're interested in this mechanism, we have a video on the channel, popular video specifically about it, which is called um, something like how to transfer data in Excel from beginner to professional, something like that. Um, if you type Excel data transfer VBA into Google and then Tiger at the end, um, it should take you there. But that, that takes you through the process very much like what we've done today doing it in a kind of manual way in VBA with one line of code per operation and then transferring it into this um, this mechanism, which for me works much better. Fantastic. Right. Can't see any further comments. Thanks so much for watching, guys. 
rest day tomorrow. So no stream tomorrow, but we'll be back on Friday, four o'clock UK time for more from the XLVBA Real World Problems and Solutions series. Thanks for watching, guys. Take care. See you soon.